for me of the National Civil Society Council of Liberia, I'm pleased to invite you all to this all important press conference. And this press conference is organized by the National Civil Society Council of Liberia in partnership with the Liberal CSO Anti Corruption Coalitions. Um, so we heartily welcome you all. And at this moment, we would love to ask our own partner, friend, to introduce himself. So thank you uh, to the member of the media. Uh, my name is James Coyle. I'm the national coordinator of the Liberia CSO's Anti-Corruption Coalition. Thank you. So at this moment, we turn over the entire stage to the national chairperson of the National Civil Society Council of Liberia, Madame Loretta Hofka. Thank you so much, um, Jeremiah and James. And this statement is focused around promoting integrity at the Liberian Senate. Fellow Liberians, distinguished members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the leadership of the National Civil Society Council of Liberia, a national coordinator platform for all civil society organizations, and in partnership with the National Coordination Body of the Liberia Civil Society Anti-Corruption Coalition, I would like to say thanks to the media and a general citizenry that continues to play its watchdog role in helping to build and strengthen our democracy. Rekobita Meshu once said, with all strong watchdog institutions, impunity becomes the very foundation upon which systems of corruption are built. And if impunity is not demolished, all efforts to bring an end to corruption are in vain. The presence of a robust, vocal, and critical civil society actor, almost without exception, guarantees that a state also possesses a good business environment. Rule of law is stronger, transparency is greater, and markets are less tinted by corruption. Why our leaders are accountable and promote integrity, sustainable and inclusive development is fostered and secured. Indeed, the presence of a critical civil society and conscious national government ability to diligently adhere to policy recommendations can be viewed as a barometer that projects a state led by confidence, stability, adhering to rule of law, and international best practice. We have invited you here today to inform the Liberian people that the National Civil Society Council of Liberia and the Liberia CSO Anti-Corruption Coalition, attention have been joined to issues of corruption and lack of integrity involving Grand Cape Mount County Senator and Chairman of the Liberian Senate Judiciary Committee, Harry Fanny. Boto Nambi Sherman, who was recently designated by the U.S. Department of Treasury for being a foreign person who is a current or former government official responsible for or complicit in or directly or indirectly engaged in corruption, including the misappropriation of state assets, the expropriation of private assets for personal gain, corruption related to government contracts or the extraction of natural resources or bribery. Fellow Liberians, members of the press, according to the U.S. Department of Treasury in 2010, Harry Vani Boto Nambi Sherman, a prominent lawyer, Liberian senator, a chair of the Liberian Senate Judiciary Committee, was hired by a British mining company in an effort to obtain one of Liberia's last remaining mining assets the Wologisi Iron Ore Concession. Sherman advised the company that in order to obtain the contract, they first had to get Liberia's concession law changed by bribing senior officials, the infamous Saba Mining Saga. In an effort to promote transparency and accountability in 2016, Senator Sherman was indicted by the Ellen Johnson-led government along with several other government officials for their involvement in USD 950,000 bribery screen. 
Regrettably, in, 19, in 2019, the presiding judge acquitted all individuals accused of being involved in the bribery scheme. Sherman offered bribes to multiple judges associated with his trial and had an undisclosed conflict of interest with the judge who automatically returned a not guilty verdict in July 2019. The U.S. Department of Treasury reported that Senator Sherman has routinely paid judges to decide cases in his favor, and he has allegedly facilitated payments to Liberian politicians to support impeachment of a judge who has ruled against him. Sherman's acts of bribery demonstrate a larger pattern of behavior to exercise influence over the judiciary and the Ministry of Justice. In view of the aforementioned, the Liberia CSO Anti-Corruption Coalition and the National Civil Society Council of Liberia have called on the plenary of the Liberian Senate through a rating communication dated February 3, 2021 to remove Senator Harriet Vani Boto Nambi Shemon as chairman of the Liberian Senate Judiciary Committee so as to avoid bringing the Liberian Senate to public disrepute. Member of the press, the Liberia CSO Anti-Coalition Coalition and the National Civil Society Council of Liberia believe that the U.S. Department of Treasury's sanctions on the Liberian Senator had a strong moral and integrity implications. And as such, the presence of Senator Sherman as chairman of the Liberian Senate Judiciary Committee does not only undermine the credibility and integrity of the Senate Judiciary Committee, but also has greatest propensity to bring the entire Liberian Senate to public disrepute. The Liberian Senate in action to distance its administration and leadership role assigned to Senator Sherman will further interpret its encouragement of corruption or disregard to adhere to the U.S. strategic policy direction to defeat corruption, hereby endangering bilateral partnership and technical cooperation in job by Liberia's legislature. The government of Liberia to the people and the government of the United States of America, it shall also affect other strategic institutions and nations aligned with the, U the U.S. foreign policy we call for conscious actions. Distinguished citizens, members of the fourth estate, Senator Sherman lacks the moral restitute to preside over judiciary matters at the Liberian Senate, and therefore he should step aside to seek judiciary redress with the U.S. government and save the Liberian state. The Liberian CSO Anti-Corruption Coalition and the National Civil Society Council of Liberia followed the recent debate held at the chamber of the Liberian Senate on this issue and want to clearly state that senators agreeing that the matter is personal and should not be an issue of the Liberian Senate is not just only a weak and lazy but a calculated attempt to undermine the entire legislature and the country at large. We are calling on the plenary of the Liberian Senate to take appropriate and timely action that promotes good governance to save the Liberian state by voting for a removal of the Grand Cape Mount County Senator Vani Sherman as chairman of the Liberian Senate Judiciary Committee as soon as possible. The Senate strategic relationship shared with U.S. Congress and broader bilateral and multilateral institutions supported by U.S. government, serving as prime partners to Liberia's sustainable reconstruction endeavor is highly valued over an accused and sanctioned senator. We are prepared to employ people power approaches as guaranteed by Article 1 and Article 17 of the Liberian Constitution in ensuring that Senator Councillor Harriet Vani Boto Nambi Shemo is removed as chairman of the Liberian Senate Judiciary Committee. The Liberian CSO Anti-Corruption Coalition 
and the National Civil Society Council of Liberia will continue to advocate and promote transparency, accountability, and integrity in the governance framework of the Republic of Liberia. Thank you for coming, and thanks for the partnership. God bless Liberia. So I want to say thanks to you all for the entire process. And at the moment, we'll be asking for questions, maximum on three questions. And those questions uh, will be asked and so by the chairperson or our own partner, uh, the SG from FLY, and the chairperson of the Liberal Anti Coalition, the Anti Coercion Coalitions. Yeah. And the question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Your name and institution, please. My name is Amos Kozau from Fortune Television. My question has to do with the extent to be corrected that you wrote the Deliverance Senate. Has there been any redress to your letter written to them? And that is that you you want him removed from the judicial chair position. Under the judicial chair position, or you also want him to be impeached for the crime never against him? Yeah, so uh, to address that quickly, uh, the issue of the communication was uh, sent in and received by the Liberian Senate on the 3rd of, of February. And uh, on the 4th, on Thursday of that of last week, uh, the issue was put on the floor. And now we have observed that the Senate and all the senators are split on the making decisions as to whether to remove their, their colleague. So uh, we believe that uh, it, we don't expect a written communication, but the action by the Senate and our communication, uh, we believe that uh, the issue has been discussed. But now we are calling on them and we are reinforcing that uh, the Senate take definite position and that has to do with the removal of, of, of Senator Sherman from the Judicial Committee. And uh, the second thing is that when he is removed and he becomes an uh, ordinary senator, we can also level with the people of Grand Cayman County who will seek uh, his um, impeachment from the Labyrinth Senate. Yeah. Okay, my name is Esther Springs and I read for Public Trust newspaper. I thank you very much for the uh, statement where but my question is that, what if the Senate fails to remove Ambassador Sherman from the committee of the GS? That could be a next action. So as we said in our statement, um, we will continue to advocate and use other channels of engagement. So our first step is to call on the Liberian Senate. And thereafter, we have other actions for our engagement. But we believe in um, their judgment, and we are calling on them to take action. So our first step is to call them to take action, and the action we want it to be appropriate actions that will lead to um, his removal on that particular committee that we're talking about. But the first action is to call on the Library Senate. Yeah. Oh, I'm Lawrence, and I work on Red Power FM and Red Power TV in Brooklyn. No, similar situation with Bernie Sherman, we are witnessing with a newly elected senator of Nova, Bernie Samuka. What's the stand of the National Civil Society Organization on this too? Um, well, um, Fanny Shema and um, Brandy Samaka issue is a unique issue that has taken a train of a court. And yesterday, the court came up with a verdict in which we are following up closely. And I think that verdict has some time frame. Wow. So we are following up on the time frame, and we're going to be close. We're going to be in close connection with the implementation of that verdict. So. It is now with the court, so we will allow the due process to take a course, and after that, civil society will come in to engage. But we respect the verdict, and we also called on Brani Samaka to do, to implement the verdict of the court. So be flexible, maximum of additional, uh, maximum, two more questions, that's all, mm -hmm. maximum. Okay. Yeah, at the back. I'm very small, I'm not and I also report from the Rappen Senate. The Bani Sherman issue is an issue that hasn't been adjudicated by a code of competent jurisdiction. He has just been uh, accused by the American uh, Foreign Section. Office of uh, the American the, uh, State Department of the Foreign Access Control. Is that enough for a Liberian senator to be uh, removed from his position as chair of the steering committee just because another country feels that he is an alleged foreign person? In contrast to uh, what my colleague just raised about Senator Browning, some guy who has been convicted and found guilty of a crime with, uh, through our local court. Okay. Yes, yeah, so um, thank you. So the issue here has to do with integrity. 
right? Uh, we believe that the U.S. Department of Treasury uh, were in no mistake when they accused uh, Senator Sherman. In fact, uh, Senator Sherman was persecuted by the Liberian government. So we are saying that... Uh, the form without the, merits, sir. The form without merits. The, come again? The case had no merits. There was no evidence. No, no. So we are talking about integrity here. Okay. Okay. So that's why we are saying that Senator Sherman should step aside because uh, he cannot be accused at the same time residing over judicial matter at the Liberian Senate. He should step aside and go and uh, address the issue of the U.S. government. So we think that uh, to bring credibility to the Liberian Senate, right, uh, Senator Sherman should step aside. The same thing that the organization believes that our senators should be subjected to what the U.S. government thinks rather than what our food thinks. Because our food have said there's no merit in the case, we don't find any substantive evidence against him. The U.S. government thinks he's guilty. So okay. which one should be okay. okay, I think in addition to support on the SG, one that is more the cardinal, the United States of America is not just any country. And in no way the U.S. government will sanction an individual based on emotion or personal personal dissatisfaction or issues. They are being, we assume, they are being extensive investigations. And they even listed the issue of his involvement in bribery, uh, providing uh, of salary to, to lawyers, routinely providing salary to lawyers. Uh, and so the U.S. Treasury becomes the lead institution in the U.S. government that, that institutes sanctions on his, in the individual that undermine democratic principles and standards. So we are not saying Senator Sherman should not be a senator. The face of Liberia is also anchored to its own international partnership, and the U.S. government provides real support in terms of bilateral assistance to the government of Liberia. If the U.S. if the U.S. government went through the process of investigations and in that oppression also sanctioned them, it becomes the moral obligation of the Liberian government to also respect mm -hmm. the decision of the U.S. government. We're not saying Senator Sherman should resign uh, as a senator, but we're saying recuse himself and, and, and go to the U.S. government. And, and, and they take its legal stand. Yeah. So, in its sincerity, we respect the opinion and the decision of the U.S. government through the Treasury. So, it becomes the more obligation now to send the to also uphold that decision. Yeah. So, the last question that we close. The last question. Okay, so thanks to everybody. I want to say thanks for coming and wish you all a wonderful time. Thanks for the partnership. Thank you.